Welcome back, everyone, to the 0K April 2020 2v1v1 tournament. 2v1v1 tournament. It's a bit imbalanced, but that's what we do. No, it's just a 1v1 tournament. And we are into round 5. We're going to be having Mana 12 versus Randy, currently the top two players in the tournament. They are... Well, they are almost... They're almost fully done. Like, once we get through this match... Whoever wins this is going to be undefeated. The other one's going to have just been defeated now. And then whoever wins this, if they win the next match, they are solidly in first place. But if they lose and then win, then they're not. So yeah. It'll make sense when we're done this match when we look at the standings after round five. But basically, whoever loses this goes 4-1 and one into round 6. Whoever wins of 3-4 and four is 4-1 four going into round 6, so they'll fight each other. Whoever wins this is 5-0 oh going into round 6. And if the people who lost this and won the 3-4 and four match win theirs, then one of them is 5-1 and the other one's 4-2. We might have a tie break for third place as multiple people in, at 4-2. But anyway, let's just get to the game. Stop talking about stream, or stop talking about weird tournament related rule stuff. Mana 12, going for shields. Randy, going for shields. Hey, it's shields. We haven't seen a lot of shield openings in this tournament so far. But if there's going to be a map where you'd have shield openings, yeah, this makes a lot of sense. Also... Oh, that's right. I was thinking, sorry, I'm I'm pausing because I'm noticing my frame rate is way higher than it used to be. Okay, maybe not that much higher, but it feels smoother than it used to. And I just remember, it's like, wow, this is so smooth. I don't remember the game being this smooth. Oops. And then I remember that there's actually been a lot of changes and updates to the terrain rendering, which has improved the performance of terrain rendering. I hadn't really thought about that, but... Yeah, now I realize that's probably what's going on and why the game is actually running so much better than it used to. So if you used to have performance issues running 0k, try it again. The terrain rendering changes might have actually fixed those. Like I knew it used to be a little bit clunky for me and now it is smooth as butter. Total aside. Anyway, back to the game. Manu 12 going for very aggressive expansion strategy, while Randy is going for a more aggressive aggression strategy. More of an expansive aggression strategy. Damn it, I missed the trick. <laughs> uh, opportunities lost. Lives wasted. Comedy ruined by poor thinking, because it's 5.30 in the morning and my brain is working at half capacity at best. Alas. Still, Randy is actually doing better rights. So, I don't know. Uh, they take a little longer to get that plus three. Mana 12 does have the advantage in terms of economy, and in terms of attrition, and in terms of present army value. Randy is... Maybe a little bit having a harder time. Although apparently Randy is also streaming me stream. So they're a second they're a minute behind me, because I'm delaying this stream for obvious reasons. But they're apparently watching the stream, so now go to saying in the chat, they're watching a stream of me streaming the stream. Or sorry, watching my stream and go to stream streaming my stream. So they can see instant replays of whatever goes on in the game. That actually sounds pretty cool. Not a bad idea to do if you have a multi-stream setup. Like, just use one of those multi-stream things. There's there's a few. Search for multi-stream. I don't... You, I don't know, can you do it? I, I know there's some ways you could do it, or you can, like, have multiple channels at once. It's, it's pretty cool, but I've never really done it much myself. Neat idea, though. Or I guess you could just watch Golda's stream, because he's streaming me stream, so you just then... I don't know. Not Golda's stream. Randy stream. Golda's just the one doing that. Hey, you know, like, squad streaming tournament stuff, that's really cool. We have, like, Dying Throne and Randy that are doing player perspective streams. So, 
that's a really good idea, Petrus, to have, like, a page that is literally just all the streams for the tournament. Like, somehow get it... Oh, ideally get it automated. Uh, someone's like, all the streams for tournament-related stuff are just all on one page. That would be cool. And just mute whatever ones you don't want to... Or, like, mute whatever ones you don't want to listen to or listen to them all at once if you want to. And then... So you get to watch the commentary as well as watching the player perspectives. That would be really cool. Although it's, it's, it's the player perspectives should delay themselves by a minute as well, at least. Or have like a standard delay, one or two minutes. Just so that the players aren't like outing their strategies. A minute or two is plenty of time in 0k, that's more than enough time for your strategy to like evolve naturally. Well, usually is. I don't know. I think what I'm casting is different because I'm not focusing heavily on player bases that much. Like, I go around and see, oh, hey, you're... Okay, so Randy switched over to building some rogues because they want to deal with all these... Wait, I guess other rogues? Not going for Thuglaw. All right. Maybe they're expecting Thuglaw from Manu 12. And they would be wrong because Manu 12 is also going for rogue. I guess Manu 12 is expecting Thuglaw from Randy. But I'm not spending a huge amount of time there. But the players are going to be dwelling on their own base and construction... Might have widgets that show their production capacity or production stuff, like the factory panel. And if they have those, then yeah, it's going to be a lot easier to cheat. Whereas when I'm casting, I tend to focus on what both players can see, because that's just the more exciting part of the game. Like where there's actual combat. Sometimes I'll go back and see what the players are doing and planning on doing later on, but for the most part, I'm focusing on what is effectively public information. So watching my stream to cheat is. Probably not going to be that productive. I'm certainly would be surprised if it is, and if it is, I guess I could just up the delay a bit. Oh, okay, cool. I didn't realize there was a Twitch native support for squad streaming. That is pretty cool. So, yeah, that's a thing to think about, but yeah, there are, like, Twitch theater apparently is a thing. So, twitchtheater.tv. Check that out if you want to watch multiple streams at once. Now, granted, if you're watching this on YouTube, that's a moot point. You can just pull up multiple videos and watch them simultaneously if you want to get the experience. Or watch them separately if you want to actually, you know, absorb anything from any of them. But maybe I'm just old and don't multitask as much. Because I'm some old codger millennial. I'm 30 years young. Back in my day, we only had 16 bits for our gaming consoles. That was all we ever needed. Oh, someone find me my glasses. Okay, Randy is doing an amazing job with this bandit. Just wrecking face and rogue. I mean, was it three or four rogues for the cost of nothing? It's totally for free. The rogues not mentioning anything. Randy, not even fight. Are they fight moving? No, this bandit is just being manually microed. No, wait, that can't be right. No, that was fight move. That was absolutely fight move. I was looking at it, I was like, wait a sec, no, that... Yeah, that is totally fight move, it's just kind of confusing. Okay, I gotcha. Man, look at that automatic micro! Uh, it's hard to tell sometimes in Zero K what is automatic micro and what is actually the players being clever. But no, I was like, Randy's mouse isn't here. It, Manu 12 is doing a bunch of work, but Randy's leaving it alone. <laughs> and the bandit itself goes down to Randy's own rogues. It's like, no, no, that's just stupid. Just, just, just die. Randy's own rogues got jealous. Shot in the back. Well, it looks like Randy, thanks to, well, partly that bandit, but also just generally good placement of their units. Managing to just wreck Manu 12, like just completely surround Manu 12 on all sides, siege their main base. And I don't think Manu 12 is much. They get their last stand right here, but Randy's got triple the economy. And yeah. Okay, Tough Dienigo in the chat apparently is in their late 30s or early 40s because they're calling me young for growing up with 16 bit consoles. It's like, yes, I did. The Sega Genesis was released two years after I was born. I think the Super Nintendo was. Was that contemporary with it, or was it a little later? I think it was a little later. The Genesis is 91. No, sorry, the Genesis was not 91. It was like 89, I think. 
have to double check. No, the Genesis is young. Genesis is older than me. Now that I think about it. Yeah, Sonic the Hedgehog was released when I was two years old. Although I didn't get into it until I was six. But what was the... When was this thing released? 80, 88 in Japan, 89 in North America. I was... I am as old as the Sega Genesis. I'm slightly younger than the Sega Genesis. So yeah, I didn't just grow up with 16-bit consoles. Like, I grew up with them... They grew up with me. It's <laughs> a better way of putting it. Anyway, Randy taking that match. Currently undefeated. Man of 12, on the other hand, going 4-1 and one and will be fighting the winner of... What was it? Shatcher versus Dimefriend, I believe it was. No, don't want to do that. Or right, is versus Google Frog? Let me just double check. What was the standings? No, it was Dime Freund. Oh, but Kshatcher and Dime Freund must have already gone at it. Yeah, Kshatcher and Google Frog. Kshatcher won that. Dime Freund, on the other hand, against Dyth 68. Oh, so we actually could have solved a tiebreaker because Kshatcher and Dime Freund are not fighting each other. So they could both go 4-1, and at that point it'd be Manitoulk Shatcher a dime for into round 6. And if Randy loses... Yeah, we could, we're probably going to have a tiebreaker for, for third place. Okay, I thought Shatcher and Dimefriend would be fighting each other. That was my mistake. So anyway, we... Is there any... What matches are currently ongoing? I guess Dice 68 and Dimefriend. We already know what happened with Shatcher. They won. So, Dein Freund. Man, I went through all that theory crafting and nothing came of it. Oh, there we go. Dyth 68 and Dein Freund. What? Yes, rejoin. Actually, I guess I grew up. What? Bit Death is the PlayStation, because that was released in 95. Although, I say my childhood was more defined by the Sega Genesis. Actually, it's more defined by the early Macintosh computers. <laughs> I didn't have any consoles until the GameCube. My cousins had consoles, but I didn't. Alright, so... Back to the game. Dimefriend versus Dyth. And we are once again back on Wanderlust. Dimefriend going for Spiderbot Factory. Shieldbot from Dime. Sorry, Dimefriend from Shieldbot. Dyth, Spiderbot. And. Now, if Dimefriend wins this, it's going to be like the tiebreaker. If Dimefriend loses this, then we're back to the calculation that I had previously. Maybe. I don't know. Dyth actually might get themselves in a position where they can get second and third place. And Dyth actually doing a. Pretty solid job holding the line, but Dimefriend has managed to take a massive economic lead early on and is not letting that go. Strong harassment from Dyth over to the south side of the map is looking scary, but it's still not quite enough. Dimefriend able to sweep in over to the north side into the main base. Getting rid of Dyth's Geoplant. That could be it. Dyth on the ever. No, they're going for revenge. They are not throwing in the towel that quickly. Going for revenge in the main base and taking a lot of losses in the process. But still able to wipe out a lot of Dime Friends economy, retreating up the hill because spiders, however, losing their own factory in the process, which is a massive blow. Dime Friend, I'm not sure what you're going to be able to do here that could lose you this game because Dyth right now is behind 20 metal per second and is also going to be having a tough time maintaining this army, even. They've rebuilt their spider bot factory, but they don't have a whole lot in the way of actual units yet. Dime from a 3,000 metal advantage on attrition and 10 metal per second, 10, 15 metal per second advantage normally. Okay, Harvey, I don't think there'll be a three way tie ultimately. There will be tie break matches. If there's a three way tie, what will likely happen is a double elimination bracket. Well, kind of double elimination. Basically, it'll be like two people fight and then the loser fights of those two and then the winner fights. It's basically double elimination, but one side is there's two people in winner's bracket and one in loser's bracket. I think that's how it was, how it ends up working, effectively. So 
So, with that dying throwing, they're kind of being stopped in a bit of a contain, and they still have that economic advantage, which they're turning into a lot of bandits. Now, they're still good for attrition, too. 18% lead. I mean, 3,000 metal is a large lead. But it looks like most of the investment has been into economy, so Dying Friend is definitely playing the long game here, and they've got the advantage there. Especially with the reclaim over inside of Dyth's base. Although, to be fair, that reclaim is a large part of their economy. Dyth, however, nowhere near a position to actually deal with it. Oh, thanks, Google Frog. Google Frog saying, it says something that you can still get a lot from super speed. I'm not sure if that's a comment on the readability of the game, which I would say is top-notch, or a comment on my casting abilities, which, if it is, thank you, I'm flattered. But yeah, it's one thing I really like about this game, is that it's, it is eminently readable. There is nothing going on that's not on the map. Speaking of on the map, though, Dyth is losing the build power that they have there. Dynethroid being held back by a single crab and a stinger, but the stinger has gone down. The crab is still in position, but with the right positioning from these rogues, that crab is not going to be too effective. May not matter, though. Between the crab and the recluse, those rogues are being completely wiped out, but Dynethroid has managed to break in regardless. These bandits should be able to take out everything here. Crabs, shots will fight through. The recklesses are able to... Actually, no, the Redback, rather, is able to stop the bandit. So it is far from over for those recluses. And the Redback. Mostly the Redback, honestly. The Redback is a... That Redback is an absolute hero. Now, with the caretakers in the back, Dyth is nowhere near losing the build power they need to keep their factories going. Unfortunately, not a whole lot of reclaim. The commander has, in fact, taken that for Dying Throne. But there's revenge! Dynefront's commander getting under heavy fire from recluses. Weaver's coming in to help do some reclaim as well, but the lotuses, a dozen lotuses coming around the side. There are no tarantulas to deal with this. The redbacks are not a bad choice, but it's just not enough firepower quickly enough to get rid of the locusts before the redbacks all die. They're doing a great job taking out the lotus locusts that they can. And the razor as well doing a lot of damage. In fact, the locusts not focusing on the redback, focusing on the razor instead, leading to their destruction. All the locusts are gone. The commander is forced to retreat. That entire reclaim field is completely freed up for Di for Dyth's taking. And there are still, I believe, some weavers here. Yes, there are indeed a weaver. There are a weaver. I know is bad grammar. I can't. So Dyth, with a possible route back into this game, thanks to this Weaver, thanks to the Reclaim Field being taken back. Gotta say, Dying Front, I was a bit of a misplay. I understand why you'd go for the Razor. That is scary, and it does have a fairly large range. But the Redbacks are amazing against Locusts. Any Riot unit is amazing against Locusts because they're low to the ground and they stick close together. And they're quite low HP. So they're basically Raiders, and Riot units can get in and hit them. Now, Redbacks, they're Riots based on being hit scan rather than being a Rapid Fire hit scan rather than being splash damage like Reavers or Rippers. So it's not quite as obvious. Like, Reavers and Rippers do really well because of the fact that ban that Locusts tend to group up. Redbacks are still an amazing unit against Locusts, and honestly, the bigger threat. Razors do not kill Locusts that quickly. Redbacks absolutely do. Dianfreund is still leading this game. The attrition lead is starting to close. Dyth... 1500 metal behind and reclaiming quickly. Again, they had more than enough build power to get this to work, so they're fine as far as making use of the metal that they're getting. Of course, Dying Throne is amazingly strong, or has an amazingly strong army that will not go down quickly, and that crap has been racketeered into oblivion. Unfortunately, as has the Spiderbot Factory. At the same time, there is a setup for a rebuild over in what would be normally the main base on the eastern side of the map, the equivalent to where Dianfront is set up. But unfortunately, Dyth is still fighting in the back foot. That reclaim is working especially well to get them stabilized. It's just that, again, that attrition is becoming a problem. The army value overall is becoming a problem. Dyth is simply unable to maintain the position they need, and it's proving a massive struggle. Now, fortunately, again, Dyth had a lot of caretakers. They could rebuild. They could get a reclaimer out of it. They can easily use that to rebuild. 
So Dyth isn't completely dead, but it'll take one or two good battles for Dyth to get even, let alone to start winning. <laughs> that being said, is that a commander dead? That was a commander dead! Dying for his commander goes down to the Redbacks. That opens up the north side for harassment. There's still a lot of racketeers, but that's going to break that siege. Just by splitting attention. Fortunately, Dyth's Crab did move forward trying to either get attention or possibly get some damage in there. And the Redbacks are being taken out. Doing a lot of damage in the process, though. Not going down without a fight. Actually, not going down at all, it turns out. The Recluses are going to die. But the Redbacks able to retreat and honestly just retreat. Get out of there. Dyth. Re retreat, regroup, get some more recklessness with those redbacks. They did an amazing job. They bro helped break the siege, or at least open things up a bit. I mean, the siege is still... It did it did its job. It got rid of the factory. But the factory has been rebuilt, so Dyth, just go. Maybe build another factory, too. Like, an air factory or something. Actually, yes. Build an air factory, get a Thunderbird, wipe out this shield ball with Thunderbirds, you'll be golden. But I don't see that happening. I think Dyth is focusing entirely on getting spiders up. And I can see that. That army has been working out at this point as well as it has. I mean, the results are... They are what they are. I don't think... This is why I'm saying get a Thunderbird, because I really don't think that it's working super well. But no, we're getting a tank factory instead. Rapid build tank factory. I don't know what that is for. Maybe Tremors, but it's a little late right now as the Shield Ball is kind of on top of the base and Dimefront is basically looking at winning this game and putting this entire tournament into a bit of a tie situation. And Dyth throwing in the towel. Unfortunately did not have any way of countering those shields quickly enough and that Thug Law Ball takes the game as Dimefront now is 4-1 and one in the tournament. And with that, I believe we we're done round five. Yes, that was the last match of round five. <laughs> it's the crab somehow teleported deep in enemy territory. I have no idea what happened. So with that, Dimefreund is for... Oh, Hercules crab napped. Thank you, Coltrane. I missed that. Oh, okay. So we're actually still in a... Re Wait, no, 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 no. Dimefreund's a 4-1 as well. Hang on. So... Dimefreund, Kshatriya, Mano, 12 are all at 4-1. Randy's at 5-0. So if Randy wins this, first place is set. And that's Kshatriya, Mano, and Dimefreund. And it's like, if one of them wins and the other two lose, then it'll be a thing. But I don't know how it's going to work. We're going to have probably a tiebreak for third. Possibly tiebreak for second and third. So be ready for that. Make sure you're eaten. Excuse me. Eaten. Drunk done the things that you do in order to be prepared for another hour or so of tournament. So stay tuned for that. It'll be up round six in a few minutes.